So if you thought you were having a bad day, apparently 21 people in a plane crashed near Houston. But apparently only one was injured. So that's actually pretty amazing. I think this is actually a great thing that happened. Not that the crash happened, but the fact that this plane that was carrying 21 people, pretty much all of them survived. Like, that is an amazing thing, and that should honestly just be, like, praise, because holy crap, right? But let's get into the story. So, a private jet carrying 21 people crashed and burst into flames Tuesday while attempting to take off from a Houston airport, but miraculously, only two people were reported injured. Hmm. I love how this says like one injured, but it's actually two people in the article. Gotta love that. So the twin engine MD-87 rode through a friend and ignited in a field at Houston Executive Airport in Brookshire, about 28 miles from the city, about 10 a.m., Federal Aviation Administration spokeswoman Elizabeth Corey told the Post. So preliminary information indicates that 21 people were aboard and that all of them evacuated safely she said in an email so the plane was headed to boston according to aviation sources the 18 passengers on board were headed to the city to see the houston astros play the red sox in game four of mlb's american league championship series wall waller county sheriff troy gudry told Reuters. which by the way right this probably cost like at minimum 20 grand just to fly from here to there. Probably a little bit more, honestly. But yeah. I mean, from, you know, uh, Houston to Boston, I'm just going to assume it's going to be like 20 grand for like a, just a single flight, right? But, you know, you might think that might actually be a lot of money, which technically it is. But if you split that between 21 people, that's like a, less than a grand a piece to go see, you know, a game that actually wouldn't really be that bad of a deal in all uh, things considered so video broadcast by kprc tv from a chopper showed the gutted fuselage on fire with the tail section and two engines all that remained intact after the crash so all of the passengers and three crew members got were safely evacuated from the plane with two people treated in the hospital for injuries. Anytime you have a plane that doesn't make a landing on the runway like it's supposed to, we're always expecting the worst and hoping for the best, and today we absolutely, positively got the best outcome we could hope for. Emergency services official Tim Gibson told KPRC. I would have to agree, right? So Waller County Judge Trey Dewan said on Facebook that the plane was departing to the north when it had trouble gaining altitude crossed the road, and came to rest in the field. That is such a scary sight, right? Like, imagine if you're, like, trapped on that plane and you're just basically screwed, you know? So the plane, owned by 987 Investments LLC, had a manufacturing certificate was issued in 2015, and the MD-87 had a 172-seat capacity. This is basically a situation where you have people who have a lot of money being able to do what they want and miraculously survived. So keep that in mind. But also, this is another uh, sign that if you have not gotten life insurance, you probably should. Because you never know what's going to happen, right? And life insurance can literally help out your family members or people that rely on your income to an extreme degree, right? So, for example, if one of these people, you know, sadly, if one of these people ended up dying in this accident, right, and they had very good life insurance, let's say that they had like a $1 million policy, right? But, you know, they had like two hundred grand in like student loan debt, and also they were married to, let's just say, like a stay-at-home mom with two kids, Right? that life insurance could end up paying off their student loans and taking care of their family until basically, you know, the kids graduate and 
she would have enough money to basically live off of that if she needed to, right? So that's the way to really think about like life insurance or like finances in general, right? And the reason why we're talking about this is because we talk about money. And this is just a good sign, right? That like, hey, you never know what might happen in life. And if someone out there relies on your income, you need to go get life insurance. Now, if you're like a single 18-year-old or like 21-year-old or like young adult and no one relies on your income, don't waste money with life insurance. There's like literally no point. But you should also definitely get health insurance, right? Because for example, who knows how much the health costs are going to be to just treat the two people that were treated at the hospital, right? Because healthcare can get really expensive, right? Even for minor things, right? So having good health insurance and having good life insurance in this situation will go a very long way, right? This is the same kind of like concept as like, let's say that someone relies on your income and you commute a lot to work, right? That's a situation where you need extremely good car insurance, good health insurance, and very good life insurance, right? And so like in terms of life insurance, you should try to get like about 10 to 15 times your annual income, right? For health insurance, you should, honestly, you should try to like decrease the amount of, that you pay on like health insurance. You should really just like have health insurance to really cover like the most like horrendous things that could end up happening to you health-wise, we're talking about like cancer, losing arms, legs, all that kind of stuff, right? Like like life potentially altering situations, right? And for the car insurance, right? Because, you know, we're talking about accidents. You need full coverage on your car plus a very high like coverage, right? And what I mean by this is like, for the average person, they typically only get like $25,000 policy for their car insurance, right? That is too low, right? So depending on your income, depending on your car, right? You should really aim for like two hundred dollars or $300,000 plus for car insurance. And the reason why you want something like that is because you can easily in a very bad accident, get to extremely high numbers of cost. For example, right? And this is like, not even like a major example, right? Let's say that you got into an accident and you crashed into two like Tesla Model Ys, right? That's like a $100,000 plus accident just right then and there, right? That's not even that big of an accident. Right, let's just like it's like a fender bender, or like you just like totaled their cars, right? Because you know, airbags, all that kind of stuff, right? Because a lot of states, if the airbag deploys, your car's completely totaled. So it could be something as small as just you maybe did like a fender bender, right? Like maybe like you couldn't stop soon enough and you hit two cars in front of you, and then all of a sudden, those two cars, their airbags get set off, you're in a state that deems that to be totaled, guess what? Now you're involved in a six-figure crash, right? So if you don't have a six-figure plus policy, guess what? You personally are on the hook for that amount. So that can get extremely scary, right? This is the same reason why this like insurance, this uh, investment company that owned this uh, plane probably has extremely good insurance, right? For things like this, right? That they could cover something like this or that they could cover even worse things like, let's say that all 21 people ended up dying, right? They would have insurance to basically pay out to all the families, right? Without completely bankrupting the uh, company. So that's something to really think about. And I know a lot of people may not just like pay attention to like, oh, you know, I don't need life insurance right now. It's not that big of a deal. I don't want to spend that extra money for that. Look, life insurance and just insurance in general 
can truly save your financial life. Keep that in mind. By the way, if you want to learn how to get out of debt, go to 40 bucks.com.